but let's talk about what we're doing right now. We are on a piece of cardboard here. We're trying to get our pattern together and figure out exactly what we're doing. And this one is what we chose. You guys pick this letter B. We gave you an option of A and B, and this is the one you all chose. And we're gonna do a version of this just a little bit. We'll show you a couple variations on this one. But the way we're going to do that, uh, you saw us do brick before, we're using, where we were using antiquing gel. This time we're gonna be using the gel stain, so it's a little different. And that gives you a little bit of this look. So quick and easy, so uh, let's get started and show you how it looks. First of all, we painted a piece of cardboard now because uh, this is kind of emulating our backsplash here. So it's a great way to test and get ideas together. Get your using, pattern down. Get your idea stuff. and your pattern, see what you got. Could you get me another foam roller? I'm using two colors of gel stain. This is cashmere. This is our backdrop color. The reason I wanted to use cashmere is for a uh, twofold reason. You can make your backsplash your base color a little bit warmer if you'd like, whatever color you would like your grout lines to look like. Let me show you what I'm talking about, and it's really mortar, not grout. Whatever you want this line to look like, you could use oyster, which is very similar to our wall color. You can't even see it here, but you know what oyster is? It's kind of a, kind of a mushroom color neutral, very similar to what a real uh, non-colored mortar mix looks like, and uh, oyster would be spot on to that if that's the look you want. But in our room where we're putting this tomorrow, our wall color is a steel made out of white metal on the walls. So I want to bring that in. I want to incorporate that white metal. There's a lot going on in that room, and you'll see tomorrow better. So using cashmere as our backdrop, and uh, that's what will be in the bundle as well. And I'm going to do some other variations of this. So if you're just coming on to the live, say hello. And I'm going to show you how to do a herringbone pattern and also this soldier course here of brick. Did you give me a little roller? Good deal. So I've got two colors that we're starting off with here. We're using espresso, and that's gonna give us that pretty brownish, reddish color going on there. And also we're gonna be adding into that um, walnut gel stain. So I'm starting off with walnut, and I'm just gonna use my cardboard here to get a good straight line. And you probably can't even see me here, but let's just act like you can. Hold on, she's coming. And so I'm coming right down the line here. Paint paintbrush. Uh, so envision this is the bottom of your backsplash. So this would be down near your countertops, whatever your edge is, down at the bottom. Just using this roller and just rolling off some of the gel stain right onto my mop. Now this is not going to wash out. Just know that you may need a couple yep. of them. All of these tools that we're going to be using, since we're using the gel stain, they're going to be goners after this. So you're just going to know that yep. going into it. So our rollers. No longer going to be good for paint. So you're going to get two rollers in our little kit we're putting together tomorrow. Now I'm alternating and I'm using now espresso right on top of... I might give them three, I think, maybe. You'll give them three. Yeah, yeah. they need a white. Yeah. Putting espresso in that, so don't panic if it makes it a little dark because it's, it's meant to. See how we got some variation there? Isn't that yep. pretty? Just keep on making it any more way you want to make it. And so. it's okay that it looks a little kind of patterny. We're going to soften, so... Hang in there with us at this point. I know it looks a little crazy. And we are playing paint paintbrush, so you guys know how to play already. If you don't, you're just commenting any variation uh, of a comment with the word paint in it. And whoever's comment is above mine when I call brush, you're gonna be the winner of a $25 gift certificate today. So just rolling now on some more of the walnut. You don't have to put on a heavy coat. You'll, once you get the feel of it, you'll understand what's going on. We're mm -hmm. just using a Lidman mop here, or whatever this one was. It was Lidman. Mm -hmm. Whatever brand, it's got a plastic backing on it. So that's giving us some push power, you know? If it didn't have a plastic back, you couldn't get it to do a level push, but it makes it really easy to make a stamp. And so once we get this part done, I'm gonna quick show you how that you're gonna go back and add some whitening to this I'm going to show it to you right now, so a lot of you all might, might go away if you don't like this. So I'm going to show you. <laughs> we'll show you real quick, okay? It's looking so a little zebra-ish. Once on you the have camera. the zebra going there, you're going to go right into your Coliseum oh, or cashmere, cashmere. Sorry. Yep. So that's oh, the there same. you go. Here's uh, cashmere. Can you reach it? Yeah. Uh, cashmere is right here. Okay. And right there to open it. Yeah. Sorry, we weren't very prepared here. Well, we were practicing a little bit. Yep. Forgot. I emptied my so supply. the the base, which would be um, our wall, is painted in cashmere already. So right on that roller, even though this is a water-based paint, this is an oil-based stain. I'm gonna put it right on there. I know it sounds crazy. I'm just gonna go in here and mop up your mop. Just roll you some <laughs> on there. You're gonna come right back in here, and that's how you're gonna get that whitewash look. look roll and mop. Roll and mop. Mop and roll. You know. 
Well, we're first we got to roll first. So we're rolling mop. What's that? We're rolling mop. We roll first. What are you talking about? You, roll said, mop, you said mop and roll. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is she talking about? We got to roll then mop. Just go in there and stamp them. That's going to give you that whitewash brick look, okay? Where you still got a little of the red coming, red brick look coming through. You got a little of the brown. You got a little of the black. You don't have to stamp them all. It's up to you to stamp the ones you want. Leave the ones you don't, you know? Just give them all a little variety's sake. What do you guys think? You liking this? Digging on this? Now, the next thing I'm going to do... They're very quietly playing paint, paint so I don't, always know, if, I don't know if they're feeling it yet. Always they are. Well, they'll like it once we start doing mm -hmm. the herringbone. Oh, perfect. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use this little roller and we're going to dry roll over some of this. That's going to give us that little soft blending, okay? So you don't want to put your roller on here too wet. So just use your paper and dab you off some areas to make sure you got a almost a dry roller when you're going over it. And a great thing to know, I want to show you guys these two. So if you don't have room, and most of you won't in a backslash, to do a full vertical brick at the bottom so that you can get plenty of herringbone if you like this herringbone look, these little um, kitchen sponges are a great way. You want the ones that are straight like this. They also come in a little curvy, we call them drunken sponges. Um, but you want these that are very straight. Yep. But that's a great way to get kind of a half brick, if you will. And that'll give you a shorter version. See if you can see that there. Let me see, yeah, if I can get out of the comments here. See how that's about half a brick? That's a great way with the backsplash. We'll show you more about that tomorrow where it makes mm -hmm. a little sense. I just wanted you to see this whole straight little course. Now we're gonna do the herringbone, okay? So let's just get ready and uh, put the same, same mop. Same stuff. Put on now the walnut gel stain. So I'm gonna make some brown ones first, kind of like this. So uh, what you wanna do is kind of imagine you're gonna start off with a grout line there. Leave yourself a little grout. I'm gonna turn this first brick on what I call a 45. So if you know what 45 degree angle looks like, I meaning if you can lay another one down here, it's gonna make a uh, A. That's kind of the best way to think of it. I just needed that for a little blocker. Mm -hmm. If you got some pieces down here that are wet. You want to lay you a piece of notebook paper or just whatever you have over that. Newspaper, trash bag, just something here. So you don't stamp it. So the next one's going to go right there. Okay. See how I got down in here and bled off on this? So now uh, underneath there, my design isn't stamped. See that? Just lay that right over that. That way you've got it. And you want to consider your grout, your mortar lying there. So I need to really raise that on up just a little bit. See how that made that a little tighter than I want it. I want to make me a little line. There you go. All right, so the next one. So we got that guy going. Next one we need to turn in here, stamp that, and then the next one would be our little small one left. Just kind of leave in your little grout line on each one. Now, keep on burying. It's always keep good when you're doing any kind of faux finishing pattern kind of thing, but have a visual out. Yeah, we'll give you this visual if you just need it. If you need it, we'll show, leave this one where you can find it online. So the next one, uh, you just gotta look at your pattern here. We just did this. Now the next one's gonna go here. Same things, same rules apply. You do that one. And the next one coming in is gonna go this way. You always gotta make sure you leave in that grout area there, the mortar area. And just keep on going. Till you fill it in. It's pretty easy on this this piece. So now that you have two on top of each other like that, you make sure you don't screw up like I did earlier <laughs> and put one in the wrong spot. Uh, hang on a minute. I have to keep a look in here. I think it goes here. So that one just keeps going right there. I believe so. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. I just go where I can see one. You know, I look and I go. Does that one go yep. there? Yeah. And that one, the next one going, is going to go here. So on that one, you do this. So if you've got a pattern to look at, you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just get something in front of you. That's really the key. Uh, what do you guys think? Is that looking? Is key. that looking pretty bricky? There you go. So I would say those so. Those going that way. It's looking pretty good on camera. Looking pretty good in person. Up. So that's going up. So this one is coming here going to stamp just like that guy. See, that's the exact replica of that. 
and then that one. Now, there you go. That's making the whole, right there, the whole thing. We just got it to, to so now you can look at your own pattern and pretty much replicate what you're doing there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can redo that. So this one's going here. And this one is going, you're creating, recreating that right there each time. Once you do it four, once you complete the whole series, then you can look at it and understand it, I believe. Just keep on with that mindset that you can. Yeah. <laughs> I can't talk to Paula too much here because I don't want to distract her here too so much. See how I brought that up there, high enough? Mm -hmm. Create that little uh, white relief, that little line there. That's that what helped. we want to do. We did not do that on our practice piece earlier. We just peeled it off. Yep, so that's why it's always good to do a practice piece when you're doing some kind of. So whenever like I make this. make this line, then I know I've got to go, let's see, there you go. Oh, I bet y'all are on there saying, go here, go here. <laughs> <laughs> I already know that. So when I have that one going down, the next one goes here. Seems logical. Mm -hmm. And this one has under it, that's where I screwed up the last time, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to stamp that one yet. When I don't know, I ain't stamping. There you go. When I know, I stand. I don't know, I'm just coming back to that one. It's just like a puzzle, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly a puzzle. Can you imagine a man out laying this brick in a brick so, way so up on a wall? Woo! I feel sorry for him. Make sure you've had your coffee before attempting this project. <laughs> yeah. I don't have alcohol doing this, I can no, tell you right no, this now. This is not a wine and paint kind of deal. No, no wine on this deal. Do not. I, I hesitate. This is a sober I, mind. To tell you, this. This would mess uh -huh. you up with one. So, Sheila, I'm happy to go over the colors. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, our background is painted in cashmere. That's the white background that you see. And the colors that we are using for the brick imprinting that we are using on our mop head Ooh, is... It's looking good on that. Uh, it's looking really it. good, yeah. I can see it. We're using two colors of our wood gel stain, and we're using walnut, All right. which is the reddish uh, brown color that you see. And then we're using espresso, which is the darker brown color that you see. And then here in a minute, you're gonna see us go over that with Just cashmere again, which is the background color. That's, That's gonna that soften thing. everything. No, I don't feel right. I don't feel right, I don't feel right. It's here. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get the balance of it when you start looking. You can see what feels right and what don't really easily. This really makes a beautiful, rich, you know, where the antiquing gels gave you a softer version of this. This gives you that beautiful, this rich. This gives you some punch. This gives you a beautiful, mm -hmm. rich colors. That, it, this gives you the red brick feeling. Mm -hmm. It really does. Old red Chicago okay. brick look. If you guys watched some of our previous lives where we talked about doing this in our break room kitchen, which is the live that we're gonna be doing for you tomorrow. So we're gonna put this into real life kitchen <laughs> deal here. Yeah. We're gonna show you how we're gonna get around the cabinets and the faucets and all the good stuff and how to put this into real action here, not just on our cardboard. I like this cardboard, it's easy. <laughs> yeah, the cardboard's easy. It doesn't, uh, it can bend and do all the things. Um, this is the main ticket right here. Yeah. See, that's off now. Yeah. Here. Pull that off. There you go. But we originally thought we were going to do this with red paints. We all thought we'd do this with Monarchy and, or Regal, I'm sorry. And I um, couldn't see this getting that. And we just kept looking at it and we're like, oh, it's going to look pink. Pink is going to happen. I do believe pink would have popped right out. And then. We don't want pink. Yeah, and then one of us, I can't remember which one said uh, walnut would probably be the perfect color. And Oh, but that's a gel stain. And then we were like, well, why couldn't we do it with a gel stain? Yeah. And we can't. Walnut's it. Now, again, if you've just joined us, just know that because this is a solvent-based gel stain, it is a little bit smelly, so probably a good idea to crack a window. It's not super smelly. We're in a small room here. It's not I overwhelming. I like the smell, but now that's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does have a smell to it. Not gonna lie to you, but it's not super overwhelming, but if you are sensitive, it might be a little much for you, so if maybe you crack a window. gel stain, you know, but it's, yeah. not, it's not anything you can't live with. But the tools are gonna to be a one and done kind of deal. So our mop head's gonna be a goner after this. We're not gonna be doing any more bricks with it. Um, Unless you've got turpentine around your house or something you can clean them if you yeah. want. The rollers, same deal. So, um, and we're gonna be putting together a great bundle for you tomorrow on that. 
Okay, so there you go. And uh, um, Cindy had a great idea. She said this would look really cute on a plain concrete patio. Oh, it would look excellent. On flooring, absolutely. This would be you really cute. You got the time, cute. you can do anything mm -hmm. with this process. Mm -hmm. Yep. And keep on working it. And you can, just so you know, if you do this on flooring, you can use our water resistant sealer Works over on it. top of the gel stain. So it does work over this. Same rules apply. You gotta let it cure, and then you can use the water resistant sealer over you it. You gotta let this cure too, just like paint. Yeah. Before you start sealing in the, but it's going to cure quicker because it's a yeah. solid. Now on a backsplash, I know that's going to be the next question. There's no need to use the water resistant sealer on a backsplash. No. This product is, uh, of course, the paint itself has a great durable, scrubbable top coat built into it, so it's ideal for a backsplash already. The gel stain is made of a top coat of a polyurethane based uh, top coat. So can you see me now? Probably not. You're okay, up there. we're good. We got it as far as we need to go. So there you can you go. see it. How cute is that? So it is already a top coat in itself. So no need to add anything additional for. Um, watch drop that ended for uh, a backsplash. So the only time we talk about the water resistant sealer is anywhere where standing water might be. Okay, I'm just trying to get something here, mm -hmm. so we didn't have a blank. Now you're wishing you hadn't. No, that's good. It's good. I just gotta have another little piece there. I'm gonna get my little triangle right there. You see? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stamp it down here. That's it right there. That's all we needed to fill that in. And so now let's go back with our white. All right. One more step. Now it's time to. If you don't have to do this now, this part yeah. you do not have Optional. to. Optional. If you like it here, totally stop, stop here. You're totally good. We kind of like adding that mm -hmm. white feel back to it. This so, didn't produce a red. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. Mm -hmm. We wanted that white washed feel without having pink coming, and this don't give you that pink at all. Mm -hmm. This gives you that old antique. Now brick you could feel. literally lay the white on top of every brick and have it look like a very white washed red brick which I think would be really, really pretty. Show them that up close. That's what we wanted. We wanted just some to this, look white this it one, out. Yeah, this one's actually not super whitewashed. No, it's just got some that are. Uh -huh. That's what we're doing, uh -huh. just some. Yeah. Now you could do the whole thing. You could you could go back and do what Paula's doing here on every single one if you I'm just to. looking at it going, hey, I'm gonna make one of them right here look real white. Like it's got old paint popping off of it or something like that. I think this is killer. Mm -hmm. I really do. This might be my favorite technique. I didn't know we're getting into the faux painting world, but mm -hmm. uh, hey, I like it. <laughs> we like giving you guys these unique options for cheap things you can do. Yes, and make a house. big impact for an accent wall, a backsplash, or hey, house on up. your on your floors. Now look, you need to do half a brick. You don't even have to do the whole brick. Mm -hmm. So you want to come over here? Did you see that? Let me just show you. You just put half of your roller with a Maybe show us it. right here. I think we could see it really good right there. All right, so look here. I'm just going to push half of my brick down. Pick it light pressure on the back. See how that just did that on the half piece? That just highlight it where you want it to be. You can highlight right there. You just hit what you want to of it. Kill as much as you want. And I'm now dry brushing it, but I like that texture that it's doing mm -hmm. too, don't you? Mm hmm. Just let it kind of reprint each spot. I'm gonna pick it up and hold it so you can see it, not flat, but more as a wall. I'm just keep on daubing around here. Uh, Chris wants to know, could she do this over tile that surrounds a gas fireplace? Sure can. Yep, absolutely. Sure can. You might want to think about using that small brick there too. Something else you can do is down on this area. When you say show small you brick, you mean the, the small, small sponge. Small sponge. Like the kitchen sponge versus the mop. Tomorrow okay. we're gonna to show you how to do this little soldier course here with the small with the small one, okay? Dakota just went out and got us those little small sponges because we don't have a huge backsplash that we could recreate all of this, right? So we're gonna run a course sitting right on our countertop right here with this first little course, we're gonna half that brick. We're gonna do the short bricks there. So I'm gonna show you how tomorrow to go in there and put a piece of tape right there and go ahead and tape this off and put paper down here. So when you come along doing this around there and you're, you're gonna already have your paper up, you won't worry about getting it on your wall, then you're gonna remove all that, mm -hmm. come back with your little sponge and just put all those little straight up pieces in there. It's gonna be easy then. We'll yeah. try to make, take the complication out of it. Yeah. So 
Let's hold it up. I, I tell you, see. I tell you guys what I'm going to do. I'm going to add this picture, our reference picture, when I build this bundle out for you tomorrow. No, you I'm going to include that picture as a reference that. in our photos, and that way you guys can grab that and uh, either save it to your phone or print it off or look at it there on our website and have that as a reference if you wanted to the herringbone. I don't think you'll need it if you're not doing the herringbone, but if you're going to try the herringbone, I think it's definitely very helpful. You need helpful. to see something. Yeah. Uh, hang tight. Y'all keep chatting. I'm going to go grab do? another dry roller. That's dry and really good, so I'm going to roll that real quick. Okay. Yeah. Just to show them what that looked like as we rolled it. You rolled it with white, though. You need a dryer roller with white? My, my white was cold. Oh, saturated. No, I couldn't get enough thing out of it. I really, <laughs> I really made a smear out of the other. <laughs> so uh, some of these are pretty wet, but let's just make sure they're not, look at that. So let's just give it that old Chicago look, whitewash, like somebody actually whitewashed this, okay? Mm -hmm. So now some of, them are, some of them are a little wet, some of them are a little, a little wetter than others, mm -hmm. and they're gonna pull that, muddy that up a little bit. Now, whether you like that or you don't, you don't have to do this. This is just again. So you want another to soften. optional step. You can always stop at any point here along the way. You want to soften your wall? That you can do. A lot of y'all like it softened up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking at this and you're going, mm, it's a little dark. There you go. Just wait. We got one more step for you. If you think it's a little dark, still. So. What was that? We went back over it with more white. Oh, again? Mm-hmm. In here, yeah, we'll do that. Did you already forget it was like 10 minutes ago? I forgot that. <laughs> I forgot I did that part. <laughs> you ain't leaving in this head over here I got going on. Uh -huh. I got a lot, a lot of She's things. She's already on to the next project. These down here need it. These are looking a little zebra-y here. So. I like those. I like them too, but they're on camera especially. They're looking a little... That looks a lot They're looking a little, pretty, yeah, they're looking a little Dalmatian y. Okay, I've already rolled them a little once, but I'll roll them again. I'll do Dalmatian them. That ain't Michelle says, definitely going to need the herringbone to guide. <laughs> guide, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I, guide I, is helpful. Anytime you're doing a pattern, we always recommend that. Even when you're doing any of our countertop patterns, we always say, have you something to look find at? Find some kind of reference photo you like and follow along. That eases your, your mind. You yeah, know, you feel like you have a plan, you know? Now look, you probably thought that was smearing that up, but that softened that, it really looks mm -hmm. pretty in person. Now, what it looks like online, I don't know, but I like it. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back and pop up some of that white, mm -hmm. if you so mm -hmm. want to do that. So you want to mm -hmm. say, let's pop that little guy up, make this look really whitewashed. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. That's not what we did last time. What did I do? You went over with the roller with white. With like a you dry brush roller. Well, that's why I don't remember it because I was doing that by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mean well, to I do liked that. It. <laughs> well, this works too. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably something they can recreate easier because whatever I did then, I don't even know how I did. Where's the other one at? In the kitchen still? Uh huh. Go show them that one. All right. See if they like it. Bring it. We'll show you our demo, our first demo that we did. See what y'all think. So this is going to give you a lighter version. After you've softened, you can go through and just kind of... Jared might have picked it up. Jared, he went in there and looked at it. I don't know. He did. It was it was behind the kitchen sink, Mel. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Somebody might have taken it home with them. Okay, there you go. There you go. You like that? Show you the clothes. Did you bring it in here to show Brady? No. I did not. Oh, it's right here. Oh, it's right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Snake yeah, it would have bit see, us. You Snake it would have bit us. That kind of turned out about the same. Very similar. All Very right, similar. so there, yes, I probably put more white on it. It's close. Mm -hmm. So there's the one we did as our demo video. All right, any questions? You got questions? I think I've caught them all, as okay. much as I can see. So look, if you wanted to do a brush. line of short brick like we did here, yeah, that's and nice. short brick, look at that, with a short, if you want to just do short right up against your herringbone. I'm telling you, it's easier than wallpaper. That's a, 
That's a lot to look at there. Yeah, it's easier than wallpaper. <laughs> well, just imagine. You could do your countertop. You could do anything if you want a brick look. This has got a little bow to it, so you're seeing a little curvature. Definitely not straight, but they can see the full effects. Mm -hmm. All right, there it is. Somebody's probably looking at that and thinking, what are y'all doing? Ooh. I got to call us the paint, paint, brush winner. I think it looks pretty great. It looks amazing. Looks pretty good. Cool. All right, you know what we haven't shown you? Yeah. We didn't show them our finished table the other night. I'm going to show that to them because a lot of them asked about it last night. Mm -hmm. Let me take these right. gloves off while you do that. You call right. us I'm going to call us a winner. It's Vicki Cantillo Posh. Posh. P-O-C-H-E. Right. Let me move you in here oh, with 